we have a very special guest on our show today who has worn many hats in her life and career she's an mba from iim kolkata a motivational speaker she was a caregiver to her husband who had cancer most of all she's running an amazing organization in support of cancer patients and survivors which is called love heals cancer welcome dimple parmar thank you so much nidhi for the warm introduction and uh, giving an opportunity to speak on uh, uh, this occasion uh, glad to be here on this platform with you dimple there's a lot of emphasis on the needs of cancer patients but cancer affects not only an individual but the entire family especially the caregiver what are the most common challenges the caregiver faces yeah so uh, in cancer uh, uh, we give a lot of emphasis on cancer patients and i think uh, similar emphasis needs to be given on the uh, caregivers too because uh, when something like this happens in your family it's not just the patient but the entire family get affected by it the entire family goes through the similar journey and i'm sure the patient goes through a lot of mental suffering physical pain uh, and other uh, challenges that they go through but uh, caregiver go through the similar challenges where they all of sudden a new uh, responsibilities have come on their shoulder and especially the primary caregiver uh, is all there's always a one primary caregiver who takes care of everything so uh, they they don't take care of their own health they 24/7 they are always available for patient to ensure that everything is being done properly and uh, all of a sudden they feel like uh, now it's our duty responsibility and the onus is on us to save the patient which is true because um, uh, now the patient is completely dependent on the caregiver uh in terms of how their journey is going to be so caregiver needs to be alert needs to be vigilant needs to be on the toes always but it doesn't mean that they stop caring for themselves it doesn't mean that they uh they put themselves on the secondary or maybe at the last priority and you know because it's a long journey and if you don't take care of yourself then it's difficult to take care of the patient for a longer period of time so uh, there's a beautiful letter uh, that's written by uh, one of my uh, colleague for the caregivers and uh, i would like to read it here on this platform the letter goes like this um, dear beloved our life has changed seemingly from one moment to the next and it feels as if we both are grappling with how to deal with cancer diagnosis and how to relate to each other all of a sudden i am your caregiver and i want to do whatever it takes to protect you to comfort and reassure you and to make your life as healing and stress free as possible i want to surround you with love to listen to you to laugh and cry with you on this journey i think of my caregiving as an amazing opportunity to show you how much i love you i'm grateful for the gift of being able to care for you physically and emotionally there are many practical ways that i can provide support for example help to prepare for medical appointments go with you and take notes for the doctors meetings organize your medications keeping a calendar of appointments providing arrangement transportation run errands do your household work provide update to family and friends on how are you doing assist in any paper related work do research about cancer and find books that you will find helpful meditate and exercise together cooking healing meals planning some trips and vacations with you so that you feel better but to be a good caregiver however i do need your help as well to begin i would like us to figure out who can be part of your support team although i would like to be able to do everything alone i would i know it would jeopardize my health and well being which would turn me into an ineffective caregiver there are many people who love and care about you and also impacted by your diagnosis let's find ways for them to support us both it will make them feel better to know they are doing something useful for you and reducing the stress for me for a support team to work we need to identify what kind of things need to be done if you really don't know how i and or the support team can help you then please just tell me it gives us a place to start we can figure it out together as partners if you hesitate to ask for anything because you don't want to burden me or make my life more difficult 
please understand that the lack of information is much more stressful and can be overwhelming for me it would mean that i have to try to second guess how are you feeling or anticipate what you need as your caregiver i also need some feedback what kind of things are working and what is not working your needs will change over time and it's important to let me know when they do finally beloved we are on a separate journey and yours is the one i cannot completely understand there will be times when i'm exhausted and confused angry and upset frightened or hurt because you are not behaving the ways i am used to your body is not responding the way we want it to don't forget that those are the moments that speaks to the depth of my love and caring for you so this is the letter that talks about what journey a caregiver goes through and conversation between a patient and caregiver and i i want all the patients and caregivers to read this letter and have this kind of conversation so that we can support each other in our journey because we heal together yeah it is beautiful dimple so well articulated every word what you said just now is correct everyone needs to read this it's really important millions of people dimple get first hand experience with this disease as a caregiver to someone they love how did you get inspired to turn your experience into such a positive force that you decided to support and empower cancer patients and dedicate yourself to this cause uh so uh, nidhi uh, when i went through this journey uh 5 years back uh, i didn't know what 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 does it mean to have cancer we have heard about the name as a disease but didn't know what it takes to go through this disease and uh, when when first time it it struck to my friend nitesh um we thought that we'll get through it we both are very young we have all kind of support that we need and we'll get through it together i was uh, taking care of him we fell in love in the same journey and uh, he had stage 3 colorectal cancer so he went through radiation chemo and surgery it was a one year treatment and the journey completely transformed our lives that uh, after uh, in, in the same journey we fell in love we graduated from i am calcutta started working the same time when he was about to finish his treatment we got to know this cancer has come back it means the cancer was always there it is it, you know the treatment um, uh, didn't help him so uh, and that was the time when doctors told us that it is stage 4 and uh, nothing can be done uh, we'll do the treatment but chances are very less that he would survive after 6 months so that came as a shock because we did the best possible treatment and we have heard that yes recurrence happens to few people but only after 2 to 3 years and it happened with him only in 2 to 3 days so i wanted to do everything possible to save him uh, he was the love of my life i wanted to help him and uh, only thing that mattered to me at that time was how can i support him how can i help him how can i give him extra months or extra years or extra days to his life and i did a lot of research uh, got to know about many people who survived cancer stage 4 survivors radical remission survivors near death experiences and uh, survivors with clinical trials and they gave me a ray of hope that when they can then he can too uh, with that hope and faith i got married to him and we went to the us for advanced treatment by that time uh, it and it was happening very fast uh, so this initial diagnosis to the last it was only one and a half years time so we went there uh, his, his disease was way too aggressive it was growing very fast uh, he lost his voice he lost 40 kilos and many many bad side effects by the time we got to know what all things can be done should be done it was too late for him to do this and unfortunately uh, we lost nitesh in march 2018 and that's where um, i realized that you know when we go through such a uh, journey such a moment in our lives uh, honestly in that time nothing else matters what matters is that how was your journey what matters is that how he's living today um, is he pain free is he stress free uh, did he eat something um, how how can i stop the vomiting so all that matters was giving a good quality of life we didn't think about about career about any of the materialistic things that we all most of them think about that mat all that matters was that how can i improve his life so uh, after going through such a deep experience that gave me a purpose to this life that 
there was one nitesh and there are millions of other nitesh who are going through the similar journey we were fortunate that we had access to the great support system uh, many thousands of people supported us but then there are millions who don't have that kind of support system so it was my inner calling that it was my time to give back to the community to the society who helped us a lot and uh, i felt that it is because we always try to find out the reason behind the way things happened with us and i was also trying to figure out that why did this happen why two people two strangers come together fall in love uh, get uh, get cancer fall in love get married and then ultimate passing what is the purpose of everything why did i do what i did and only answer that i could get was maybe this was the the bigger picture maybe this was planned by the mystic power that this is what needs to happen and then now how can i channelize my experience with cancer uh, for the greater benefit how the way nitesh sacrificed his life i i i will not let his sacrifice go just like that rather i will i will use that opportunity to um, to help many others via nitesh's journey so and that was only way i could find solace with what just happened with us so um, uh, the choices were clear that you know um, i want to help people so i resigned uh, the day nitesh went to icu didn't know what's going to be the outcome but i knew that i was anyway on sabbatical for last 8 months and i knew that that's not the path i want to choose so um, after nitesh passed away um, the, the it was very clear that um, i want to help people i want to support them give them hope and that's how my journey with cancer um, evolved into lovis cancer and zenon coronario through which we are able to help patients now fantastic dimple now just in the middle of this uh, what you told us you said one thing that even though you had means and access and support yet there were so many things you said that you were not aware of right so like you being you know like uh, educated do you think that now when when you are into this you know uh, helping people out do you think awareness is still lacking in our country like how far are we from being aware about this disease right uh, it's very important question uh, because awareness is lacking on uh, all the three fronts um, first front is before the diagnosis which is the um, awareness about cancer itself awareness about side effects and symptoms and prevention and early detection and screening that's the first leg uh, the second leg is during the treatment once you are diagnosed then what kind all things should i do to improve my chances of cure and the third thing is the palliative care where we focus on the quality of life and uh, not on the cure uh, intent so what i felt that in india especially uh, only uh, uh, 30% of the healthcare worker know about how to do a simple self examination of breast cancer i'm talking about healthcare workers so when this is not there even though somebody has gone through cancer experience in the family still they are not proactively going for the um, the he- annual health checkups and the cancer screening test so um, and it all starts with uh, from gps from doctors because we all have our family physician it starts with them to spread awareness about what all tests should be done and how it should be a part of the routine checkup why uh, how colonoscopy should be a part of people check up people who are um, uh, you know um, uh, more than 40 years of age um, breast cancer should be part of the routine check up so uh, and it's all like once in a few years that you need to do so uh, i think uh, awareness in terms of knowing about the side effects and symptoms is not there even nitesh's case we were so we were educated but still he tolerated all those side effects for 6 months and then when it became very severe that you know he he lost 15 kilos of weight he had severe back pain he would take pain killers and sleeping pills and uh, he couldn't eat for months and months and later then we had bleeding in um, uh, bleeding through the rectum and then he went to the doctor thinking that it's piles and that's where doctor suggested colonoscopy and then he was diagnosed that stage 3c cancer i believe that if it was done a few months earlier maybe it was stage 1 or stage 2 so tolerating symptom side effects tolerating that not visiting doctors on time in fact i have i've seen some cases even when you visit doctors on time there are cases of misdiagnosis so lung cancer patients are being treated for tb uh, colon cancer patients are being treated for piles 
so uh, it's awareness needs to be uh, done from both fronts from the people front as well and from the doctors front as well where you know when patients should also visit multiple doctors for second opinion because anything and right now today what i see that cancer is spreading at a very fast pace mm -hmm. every year more than 10 lakhs people are getting diagnosed with this disease so uh, it has become a very common name uh, nowadays so we need to be aware of what may go wrong and then also following healthy lifestyle practices so that it doesn't happen or you know we at least reduce the chances of happening with us so that's the first thing second is on the integrative side once you are diagnosed with cancer we all focus on the medical treatment in that too it takes uh, many times people visit the wrong oncologist for once or twice or thrice and then they visit the right doctor because which type of oncologist to meet also depend on the type of cancer which stage of diagnosis you are in what treatment you have taken in the past and many other factors um uh, and once the medical treatment starts um this this not much focus which is on the side effects and symptoms management because cancer journey is half one once you know that what's going to happen to yeah. you and how to manage that it all comes as a shock and surprise to everybody that okay now what do i do when i'm diagnosed and by the time you come out from the shock of the initial diagnosis by the time your caregiver starts doing research start collecting all the support material or things together it's it takes months and months and by the time most of the damage is done so uh, how do we integrate both modalities together because when we focus a lot on the medical treatment we also need to focus on improving the quality of life because if the patient is not happy or suffering how can we expect better clinical outcomes of the medical treatment this i learned when i was in us that lot of focus on the quality of life as well lot of focus on improving the chances of cure by doing different modalities of treatment together which are scientifically backed as well so in india what i have seen that there are many support groups and communities where patients try things it's not like they don't go for any of the nutraceutical supplement anti cancer or ayurveda they do go for it but then is it really always scientifically backed is there anybody who is combining medical with complementary together and and seeing that what works best for the patient no uh, people are trying what other people are doing rather taking a scientific approach rather visiting a uh, uh, you know an expert they are actually doing what others are doing and that's and i also did the same mistake i have seen patients for renal cancer coming to us and taking wheat grass because it helps in cancer but then they need to understand that wheat grass is high in potassium and it can actually take you on dialysis which happened with this patient because patient kidney was swollen and he actually ended up doing dialysis so we need to see what works best for us there are hundreds of complementary therapies but not 100 are helpful for you maybe 10 or 20 are helpful and that's where we guide patients on what works best combination of different therapies together based on the scientific evidence so yes awareness needs to be done on this front too by oncologist as well as from the patients uh, uh, too uh, recently we had a session with voice of healthcare where um, india's uh, top notch oncologist was there and um, i was one of the panel speaker and uh, the the one of the topic was integrative oncology and it was great to see that now oncologists are talking about it and they are saying that yes we need to integrate this together to get the best clinical outcome and to manage side effects and uh, uh, symptoms for the patient third leg is the palliative care unfortunately because we don't focus much on the quality of life um, not much emphasis has been given on the palliative care uh, many oncologists have told me that dimple do something about end of life care because <clears throat> that time hospitals and doctors are not able to provide much support they say that please go home and let the nature takes its course but that's the time when patients and caregiver need the most of the support because it is now you are in trauma of losing the patient in a few weeks time so what do you do how your how we do the emotional counseling how do we give them comfort during those last few weeks um from both patient front as well as from the caregiver front what patient need is pain management uh what um, uh, and sleep management as well what caregiver needs is emotional counseling that it's okay and we will try our best that he is or she is not in discomfort or pain or you know when they are leaving this world so i see that on all these fronts a lot of work needs to be done and um, uh, now in the last few years we are seeing some awareness on it but there is a long way to go certainly my next question would have been that what is love his cancer doing but by by hearing you speak so much about it 
I think all our viewers have a fair idea that what a wonderful job this organization is doing. If the founder, Dimple Parmar herself, is so well informed about nearly all aspects of it. But one question is that do you receive any form of support from large NGOs or government agencies, Dimple? So, uh, Nidhi, um... In terms of the support uh, uh, for Lovell's Cancer and Zenonco, uh, basically when we started Lovell's Cancer, we were receiving support from the uh, donors and uh, uh, no, uh, in terms of uh, helping patients. And just after one or two years, COVID happened. And that time, all the donations started going towards uh, COVID patients mm -hmm. and it was the right thing to do. At the same time, I was also thinking that how do I really make it self-sustainable or at least not always depending on the donations because there there can be another corona wave there can be any other situation where funds needs to go to the uh, the urgently critical needy people so um, we get some donations that we use to support below poverty line patients while to the aims and tata memorial we have volunteers who give them support in terms of the grocery, nutrition, wheelchair, electric cattle, cattle and many other necessities that they have need when they're going through the treatment. And also um, with Zenonco.io, which is an integrative oncology platform, what we do at times when we see that patients are not able to uh, you know, um, afford or um, we need to really, because we don't say no to any patient, then Zenonco supports Lovell's cancer and uh, through that we are able to support patients. So. From the larger NGO perspective or any other, you know, CSR, we are not currently focusing on it only because um, there is always a resource crunch. But uh, definitely, I mean, uh, last two years have been pretty uh, uh, quite heavy on us because of the COVID situation. But at the same time, we thought that how do we use this opportunity to create something which is innovative through which we are able to help even needy people uh, below poverty line patients as well. So we created certain tools. For example, we created Zyopar, which is an IO integrative oncology preliminary assessment report. It's a free report for people which educate and empower them with their own treatment options and how the treatment is going to be. So people who were not able to take second opinion or you know um, visit hospitals when the corona started, they were able to download reports and then get educated about their own cancer type and treatment and then ask the relevant questions. Next was financial resources. So people don't know like what all financial grants I'm eligible for in cancer. So we converted that into a tool. Uh, and then there are now today 300 uh, different kind of organizations. People can reach out to based on which city they belong to, what kind of, you know, card they have or uh, what kind of financial income they come in. So we thought, so basically we, in Corona time, we thought that how do we leverage technology to make it more scalable so that without, you know, much human intervention, we are able to help patients. Love Heals Cancer is doing a fantastic job. You've expanded your horizons where that is what happens when you have an IM as your founder is the first thing what is coming to my mind now, Dimple, hearing you speak. What message would you like to give women on International Women's Day? Um, so to all the women, um, I would say that uh, there is nothing better in life than chasing your passion. And if your passion involves serving humanity, then you are blessed to be the chosen one. This path may be difficult, filled with challenges, but at the end of each day, you shall feel a strong sense of achievement and purpose in life. And as Mother Teresa said beautifully, we can do no great things, but only small things with great love. Thank you so much, Dimple, for your inspirational story, for sharing it with us, and for also letting all the viewers know what a wonderful job Love Heals Cancer is doing. We wish you all the best in your journey ahead. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Nidhi. Thank you.